Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television Live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Dwala. I'm Bradley Jonathan. In our top stories tonight, security officers seize two guns and bullets from a passenger at the Bonaberry Motor Park in the Dwala 4 subdivision. The guns were discovered in a bag of plantains. We shall be telling you more. In this newscast and campaigns ahead of the October 7, 2018 presidential elections continue as candidates uh, continue moving across the country wooing uh, potential voters. Stay with us. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. The presidential candidates who will be uh, running the October 7, 2018 presidential race in the Republic of Cameroon are crisscrossing the country, wooing uh, candidates Cabral Libi of the Universe Political Party, uh, one of the uh, youngest presidential uh, candidates, uh, brought together over 10,000 persons at the start seeking in the Dollar Five subdivision yesterday. Most of them uh, were uh, young people who converged to listen to his uh, political uh, program, his manifesto, and he explained lots of things to the uh, candidates, notably the issues. That that he's going to be doing if he's elected president uh, to enhance the economy, the, the economic, social, and political life of the Republic of Cameroon. And many of them turned out en masse to listen to uh, Cabral Libi yesterday at Stade Sikam. It is one of the greatest crowds that we have seen so far since the presidential uh, election campaigns started over the weekend. Coming up, we take a look at the campaign rally of uh, one of the candidates, the lone pastor, man of God in the presidential race, Prophet Franklin Difona Fanui of the Cameroon National Citizens Movement political party. He was in uh, the country, he was in some parts of the country yesterday canvassing for votes as innocent as he reports. Candidate Franklin Zifo of the Cameroon National Citizens Movement Political Party was not in Betwa, Baron. I came here to tell the electors not to worry, for there is a new Cameroon ahead of them. A Cameroon that will consider and solve their worries. Income generated from exploited resources will be used to develop the localities concerned. Escorted by motorbike riders, the Cameroon National Citizen Movement presidential aspirant saluted the populace with passion and glad. I'm Overwhelmed with the way the people of the East region welcomed me. The list. Even though this tour before the campaign proper did not move as expected here, I still appreciate the little support this tours. We, however, started a bit late due to tight schedule of our program, but I promised them. We will return during campaign period. Franklin Dufour is thus expected in the East region to speak with the population any day from now as campaign caravans continue. 
Franklin Diffon started his uh, campaigns for the October 7, 2018 presidential election in the Mongo division of the Litura region of the Republic of Cameroon, just like many other candidates, including first vice president of the Social Democratic Front, Honorable O.C. Joshua, who is the flag bearer of the party at the upcoming presidential election, as well as Serge Espoir Matomba of the Peuple Uni pour le uh, pour la renovation uh, political uh, party who started their campaigns in the Mongo division of the littoral region of the country and in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. Inhabitants of that part of the country received uh, officials of the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement CPDM political party in the regional capital Boya. The militants of the party uh, converged in Boya to launch the campaign for the champion president Paul Bia. They were led by former Prime Minister Peter Mafani Musonga as well as other big wigs of the CPDM in the region notably the mayor of Boya Patrick Ekema Esunge who uh, went canvassing for votes for the president of the republic and painting a glorious picture of his over 36 years in power and calling on the people of Boya and the entire southwest region of the country to vote for President Paul Bia come October 7, 2018. Now on to one of our lead stories, two guns and bullets discovered by security officials in the Bonaberry in the Dollar 4 uh, subdivisions. And of course, we're talking about the uh, guns that were discovered by uh, security officials at the motor park in the Bonaberry in the Dollar 4 uh, subdivision. And the guns were discovered in a back of uh, plantains the guns were discovered in a bag that contained uh, plantains suckers and was heading to kumba in the southwest region of the country the police have opened investigations to track down the individual who was allegedly transporting the guns to the southwest region of the country and for what purpose the guns were being uh, transported to the southwest region of the country investigations and calls and this is happening while the anglophone crisis continues deepening in the two anglophone regions of the country the northwest and the southwest regions and one of the persons who have been at the center of the crisis and who is being detained at the Kondingi maximum security prison in the nation's political capital Yaoundé Mancho BBC has admitted to have uh, written a controversial uh, letter intended to restore peace in the two anglophone regions of the country and also to promote promote the living together that is being preached in the country through a tournament bringing together a francophone and anglophone prisoners. It is in this report by Fomi Armstrong Sanda. For me, Armstrong Sander with this report concerning Mancho BBC, who is one of the detainees of the Anglophone crisis held at the Kondengi Maximum Security Prison in the nation's political capital, Yaoundi, and he's, uh, he has admitted to be uh, taking some steps and some measures to enhance efforts to restore peace in the two Anglophone regions of the country, notably through a letter calling for a tournament between uh, French-speaking inmates and Anglophone inmates at the Kondingi Maximum Security Prison in Yaoundé with the intention of bringing them together in order to enhance the living together spirit among Cameroonians and also to restore peace in the two Anglophone regions of the country hit by socio-political and security crisis for more than two years today. For me, Armstrong Sander has more. For me, Armstrong uh, Sander, we shall be coming back to that report in our subsequent uh, news edition. Now we're going to talk about peace in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, the region that has been under security uh, tension for the past uh, two years today as a result of the deepening anglophone crisis however the inhabitants of that region came out over the weekend to celebrate the world peace day with calls for the restoration of peace in that region derek jato has more from boya 
It was on June 20, 2018, that the Prime Minister Philemon Yunji Yang announced an 18 month emergency humanitarian action plan, which was aimed at assisting displaced persons and victims of abuses in the Northwest and Southwest regions. The announcement later saw the outing of the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Athanganji, who announced the modalities at how the exercise will be carried out. Then came the different contributions by elites nationwide to assist government action. Four months gone, just areas like Pekaven Set in Douala, Kumba, and Bamenda, where few persons stand out to collect items being shared with most of those hit by the crisis still to receive the set items from the government. Many are now asking the question, where is the money raised for the humanitarian aid? With the victims of the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest still living in worsening humanitarian conditions. Sman Jikan Gebre reporting the, on the humanitarian aid of President Paul Beer to persons displaced internally and externally by the Anglophone uh, crisis. In, and the project has been on a standstill, practically a dead silence as far as that project is concerned after it started in Picard. Then set here in the economic up to dwell and then proceeded to the northwest and the southwest regions of the country, where at most two administrative officials handed over some basic needs to some persons. And since then, the project has uh, gone into a dead silence. Now we come back to Mancho BBC, one of the prominent detainees of the Anglophone crisis held at the Kondingi Maximum Security Prison in Yaoundi, and his controversial uh, letter calling for a football tournament between detainees of the anglophone uh, crisis anglophone detainees in general and francophone detainees in order to restore peace and promote the spirit of living together in Cameroon We'll be coming back to that report in a subsequent news edition now to Boya to talk about the World Peace Day that was observed amidst a tension and uncertainty as well as fear looming over the region as a result of the deepening Anglophone crisis. Derek Jato has more in Boya. For two years now, the only thing that has been present in the southwest region has been the absence of peace. The escalation of the Anglophone crisis in late 2016 has caused irreparable damages to many families here in the region. And this was the face Boya took as Cameroon joined the international community to commemorate the 2018 edition of World Peace Day. International Day for Peace. International Day for Peace. I'm a peace ambassador. It should be a peace crusader. He is Reverend Ta Che Williams, Presbyterian Church in Cameroon Peace counterpart and the parish pastor of Bokwango, the force behind this ecumenical movement. In our own headquarters here in Cameroon, they will hear us today. Yes. We are not a political group, we are a group of Jesus. Yes. And whenever we stand for Jesus, we do the right. Pray as if you've never prayed about peace in this nation. Yes. Because we have said today, the angels are around us to guard and guide us. Amen. Because we have said today, heaven is open to listen to us. Amen. With peace, leaves and messages in their hands and drawn from all eight groups, they sang to God for one thing, peace, as they walk along the corridor of Bokwango, a neighborhood here in Boya subdivision. And to the men of God that were present, their hope is that God should heal the wounds of the victims and comfort the distress. The day ended with prayers for mercy at the Apostolic Church, Bukwango Boya. Now out of the country, over 382,000 immigrants seeking permanent residency status 
every year in the United States of America may be affected by proposals of penalties tabled by the Department of Homeland Security over the weekend and public consultations on the proposal will last for two months. Katsi, your news. The Trump administration is considering penalizing immigrants who have received or are likely to receive social assistance, such as food stamps and Medicaid. The proposal was put forward by the Department of Homeland Security on Saturday, and there'll now be a two-month public consultation period before it comes into force. The government reckons it will affect around 382,000 immigrants seeking permanent residency status every year. Undocumented migrants, those that enter the states illegally, are not eligible for any kind of social assistance, so it won't affect them. According to data presented in previous draft versions of the proposal, foreign-born Americans turn to social assistance at almost the same rate as native-born Americans. It's just one of many moves by the Trump administration to make migration to the United States more difficult. That's it for this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Thanks for staying with us. Goodbye.